And welcome to Let the People Know. I am honored to be doing a series all year long uh, on veterans and what it means to be an American. And this is a special series. Uh, we have new shows on here on SSD TV each and every week. And today we are focusing our attention on uh, a foundation called the Tunnel to Towers. We have a retired firefighter with us. We have John about with us and we also have Kathy Rosinski and she is with the Miller Keystone Center and I appreciate you coming on our Zoom show here uh, to talk about uh, the Tunnel to Towers Foundation um, which is uh, centered around 9-11. Uh, September 11, 2001, uh, we will never forget where we were, we will never forget the lives that were lost and how it affected uh, not only our country but uh, the entire world. Uh, so John, thanks for joining us here to, to tell us about your background and what we can do to remember the lives that were lost. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's an honor to be here to talk about our foundation that's been going for 20 years strong since those tragic days of 9-11. And uh, essentially, uh, the family, uh, the siblings that lost their youngest brother did not want to stay consumed in the tragedy of that day. Real quick, uh, Stephen's story, uh, Stephen Silla was a firefighter in Squad One that's in downtown Brooklyn. And Stephen just got off his night shift to join his brothers to go play golf. Stephen got in his car and he was about a mile or so from the firehouse where he heard he had a scanner that a plane went into the towers, the North Tower. At that point, Stephen turned his car around with the intention of joining his firefighters from squad one, which is a special unit. Uh, even though they're based out of Brooklyn, they would respond to something like this. Stephen got to the firehouse and the fire company responded already. Just did not deter Stephen. Stephen got his gear from the firehouse, got some tools to the gear and the tools in his car. And he drove over to the Brooklyn battery tunnel where again he was stopped and uh, obviously they were just letting emergency vehicles in at the time to go from Brooklyn uh, into Manhattan and uh, not deterred he parked his car he put his gear on he grabbed his tools and he ran through the tunnel to the towers where he participated in the greatest rescue on American soil. But what am I talking about? Well, if those firefighters didn't get up into those staircases and clear those staircases, that the fatalities would have been much, much greater. And Stephen participated in that. 30 to 40% of our firefighters and other services were off duty. They came in and they did a magnificent job in saving lives. And fast forward, as I said before, the family would not stay consumed. They felt they had to do something in honor of their brother and all those others, those 2,977 lives lost that day. Not just at the Trade Center, but at the Pentagon, at Shanksville, and they decided, let's have a race and follow Stephen's footsteps through the Battery Tunnel, up West Street, passing the site. And that's how the foundation was started. It was started at a kitchen table. And it went from the first year, the runners, maybe about 900 to 1,000 runners. They closed one side of the Battery Tunnel, and they ran through in honor of all those who were perished that day. 
And last year we had probably around 30 to 35,000 runners throughout this country and from other countries, probably six or eight other countries across this great, great land. And uh, that's how the foundation was started. We have a number of initiatives that I could talk to as we move forward in this conversation. Very good. And we'll be getting to your background in just a second. And we'll also be talking to another retired firefighter. Jack Ohm is going to be joining us in just a bit. I do want to get to uh, Kathy before we take a break. Uh, Kathy, what is your role, um, your involvement in the Tunnel to Towers locally? Well, we will be, I am the local account manager with Miller Keystone Blood Center. And I became aware of the exhibit and I took it to our COO and I said, we need to bring this to Pittston. And he called me back two days later. He said, okay, but we are going to bring it to Bethlehem as well. So I've been the team lead, project lead to coordinate both of the events. But um, just to share a little bit about my, how Tunnel to Towers came into my life. Mm -hmm. um, about five years ago, four years ago, I started running. Did a couch to 5K training in like six weeks. And I ran two 5Ks, made some friends and they said, you got to come to New York with us. You got to come to New York. And I said, for what? There's a thing called Tunnel to Towers. And I thought, okay. And they said, you run in the tunnel. And I didn't believe, I really didn't believe them. I really didn't believe them. So I found myself on a Sunday morning in September, getting on a bus at 4.30 in the morning in Scranton. And you get to New York and you get dropped off by an Ikea in a big Ikea parking lot. And the people, it was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. So I thought, okay, this is just a big 5K. Well, then you have to wait your turn to get to the tunnel. And while you're at the waiting to get into the tunnel, you're shown videos of different people that have been, lives have been touched by the foundation. Well, I'm crying before I'm even into the tunnel. And they said, wait till you get to the end of the tunnel. And don't worry, there's water at the end of the tunnel. Well, the, the beginning of the tunnel passes the Brooklyn Fire Station, which was heartwarming. And you get in the tunnel and there are 40,000 people. It was just amazing. You're, you're sweating. You're, there, there's people from all over, firefighters, first responders, kids of all ages, um, every, everywhere. You come out of the tunnel and I'm waiting for the water, but you have to go through an honor guard. And this honor guard is 343 firefighters or first responders that are honoring one of the 343 that lost their lives. I never thought, next to having my son and getting married, this is the most incredible thing I've ever done. Two years later, I was back on that bus again and did it again. It was just an amazing experience. And when you listen to the stories of the families and the uh, veterans that have been served through the foundation, it was a no brainer. The Miller Keystone Blood Center mission um, is supporting life and helping those and making lives better for people in our community. So both of our missions, although verbiage wise aren't the same, they are the same. And it was a no brainer to marry both of us. Very good. We are, you are watching, I should say a special SSP TV show here uh focusing on the tunnel to towers and we will never forget 9 11 we will never forget those who lost their lives here in america when we come back i'm honored to be talking with uh retired firefighters and also learning more about how we're teaching the new generations about 9 11 and what is coming here to the area uh, bring your kids bring your family um, so that we could remember 9-11 forever. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're watching a special edition of SSP TV. Let the people know on the Tunnel to Towers. I am so pleased to have on our uh, guest today. We have Kathy Rowinski and she is with Miller Keystone. Uh, we'll talk about her participation in the foundation. We actually have Jack Ohm now joining us. Thank you so much. Another volunteer with the foundation and a retired firefighter and John Lombard, 
and he is also a retired firefighter and he also served in this great country, right? Both you guys. So thank you. A pleasure. <clears throat> Jack, thanks for joining the program. Um, sure. and, and thank you for taking time out of your day to join us. If you can take us back a little bit, uh, reminisce uh, where you were during 9-11. I know we, we will never forget where we were. Um, I know I remember where I was. Um, and it's a day that, you know, will never, will always mean something to me and has impacted my life as well. Yeah, sure. So I think 9-11 for us is a day like Pearl Harbor was for the, uh, an older generation or when John F. Kennedy got assassinated. Those are dates uh, and days we will never forget. And we will never forget where we were. So I was uh, off duty that morning. It was a beautiful Tuesday morning, if you remember. Uh, it, the, the sky was so blue, right, John? It was such a, a beautiful day before the attacks. And, uh, you know, I was home at my house in Staten Island doing my errands, probably out a little bit. I heard about uh, a plane into the World Trade Center. I, I, I didn't think anything of it. Uh, you know, because everybody assumed it was a small Cessna, two-seater, you know, four-seater, whatever, and it was no, not going to be uh, what it turned out to be, obviously. And then you hear about the second plane, and then, you know, I immediately got, uh, uh, called my wife and told her I'm heading into the firehouse. I was an off-duty battalion chief at the time. My firehouse was in Red Hook, Brooklyn, right by the Battery Tunnel. Uh, so we were told to report to a staging area, which we all did. And then we heard reports because uh, the fire department was very smart and they didn't want to send everybody to the World Trade Center at one time because we were fearing another attack. So we got to the staging area. Then the rumors started coming in and the news started coming in uh, how many guys were missing. So out of my eight units, all, my, all of my eight units responded. Uh, and we heard that uh, a couple of them were missing. So I gathered the guys that were with me and I said, come on, we can't wait here. We're going to go. Probably broke protocol a little bit, John, but don't turn me in. I'm retired now. So they can't really do anything to me. And we jumped into a truck and we just drove over the Brooklyn Bridge and we got down to the site. And, you know, what you're confronted with, uh, you know, two piles because it's a 110 story office building when it collapsed and, and it came down in 11 seconds uh, from the time of the start of the collapse to the time they were on the ground, 11 seconds. And it created piles about six, seven stories high. So we had two piles, six or seven stories high, spread over 16 acres of land. And we just, got, you know, we just climbed to the top of the pile like every other fireman did. And we started digging with our hands and hand tools until the heavy machinery could come. And it was a, a, a grueling uh, nine months, as I'm sure John told you his experience. But, uh, you know, one of my best, my, I have so many bad memories of 9-11, uh, not only losing 20, 20 of my men, but, you know, friends and guys I worked with throughout the years, uh, my 20 years prior to 9-11. So these guys were your friends and, and, and brothers. But I remember the good stories, and I just have one quick, real good story. About 2 o'clock in the morning, now the morning of 9-12, I'm ready to get off the pile, get some sleep. And I see marching up in formation, a group of firemen. And I said to myself, and John will, John will appreciate this, I said, these are not New York City firemen, because we don't do anything in formation. And <laughs> I, they come marching up, give me a big salute. I said, Chief, we're here to help you. How can we help you? And this is what I tell people all the time. This is the goodness of America. These firemen came from Tennessee, a small town in Tennessee. When they saw the towers get hit, they drove their car right to New York City to help us in our time of need. And I'll never forget that. I'll never forget all the good Americans that came to help us during our nine months of uh, rescue and recovery on 9-11, after 9-11. Jack, you're giving me the goosebumps because uh, during 9-11, I was actually a reporter and I live two, two hours from New York City. And we had an outpouring of support from our community. A lot of people here commuted to New York City to work. A lot of fire departments, police departments had friends, brothers and sisters in the fire and police community. 
and they were there helping EMS. So I just, it brings back, I mean, everyone was just jumping in their vehicles and supporting and bringing, everyone just wanted to help. And it was, how can I help and, and be a positive impact on such, such a event horrific that I hope never, ever, ever my children have to see an event like this in their Mm -hmm. lifetime because it has impacted all of our lives. We've all lost friends. Uh, We've all been affected some way by 9-11. So the Tunnel to Towers Foundation is very important. And it's very important to teach our youth about what you gentlemen went through um, and your bravery. And just, I can't even imagine the, the, the strength it took to you know, be looking for bodies and to be on top of metal that at any time could collapse um, and just putting yourselves there looking for men and women who, you know, could possibly, you know, be dead. So um, the Tunnel to Towers Foundation um, has now a mobile exhibit, correct? And this actually, to localize the story a little bit more, is going to be coming into the northeastern part of Pennsylvania, Kathy, correct? That's correct, Jane. And tell us if, if you guys can explain to us what the mobile exhibit is. Again, because of COVID too, this is also a really good idea because of COVID, many people still aren't traveling to big cities or maybe they are afraid to travel um, and actually go to see where the towers were and into um, the exhibits now. So this is good to be able to bring really the exhibit to us. Uh, That's right. Uh, Our our exhibit, uh, I think we're probably around, you know, our seventh year and it it, it serves multiple purposes when it's out there. Uh, It's an educational tool where we teach adults what happened and uh, our firefighters that were there that day are the guides. And it also, you see actual pieces of the buildings. Uh, We have radio transmissions of our firefighters reporting into the Manhattan Dispatcher, where when you hear those firefighters, their voices, I would say 90 to 95% of those firefighters did not make it home. Uh, Jack and I have been with the exhibit from its existence and it's something that uh, not just your area but all areas of the country people most people will not come into New York to see that museum And that's where our museum comes into play, where they could actually, like I said, talk to firefighters, walk through it, the history of when the towers were built, comparisons to the other buildings of its day. And we also talk about the 93 attack, where six civilians were killed, where they tried to knock the building down. We have cases of... Uh, relics that were taken from inside the building that are shown. And we also have pieces of our fire trucks and photos of what was going on that day. Uh, Jack Ohm, who was one of our board members, is one of our finest battalion chiefs that we ever had. And he's, his battalion took a tremendous loss that day being so close to the Trade Center. Jack, you want to jump in with some other stuff, please? Uh, Sure. So, John, thank you for that very nice compliment. Uh, But so many people sacrificed so much for uh, our freedom that day and and the 20 years since 9-11 attacks. But John is a little uh, being a little uh, modest here because John's in charge of the whole uh, traveling exhibit. He hires the firemen to go out there and uh, not hires them because they're all volunteers and they go out there and do a great job. And one of the things I try and tell people 
when I do the tours on the exhibit is that if we don't remember our history, we're bound to repeat the same mistakes. And that's why, uh, John, what you're doing for our younger kids, teaching them the history of the attacks and what happened to us. And hopefully uh, this generation, a new generation, learns from these mistakes that we made because I bring up the point, the 93 bombing, right? The blind shake said, I'll be back to get the towers. And unfortunately, eight years later, uh, you know, it was true. He came back and got the towers. So, you know, we didn't take, as a country, we didn't do uh, the right steps to protect our safety. And that's government's number one job is to protect its citizens. And we kind of dropped the ball. So, John, what you're doing with this exhibit going all around the country is, is great for our younger generation. And it's great for our generation, too, to remind us because we have short memories, right? Don't we? We all forget. And it's good to forget and forgive. But some things you can never forget. You can forgive, but you can never forget. Because we don't want that to happen ever again to any generation uh, of Americans. When we come back, we're on the Tunnel to Towers Foundation, remembering 9-11. Welcome back everyone to a special here on SSP TV. We are talking about the Tunnel to Towers Foundation and our guests are here. I appreciate your time. I know everyone's traveling uh, when we tape the show. So again, uh, thank you for taking a little bit of time to talk about this. Remembering 9-11, we have the mobile exhibit that is coming to Northeastern Pennsylvania. It's going all over the country. And uh, Kathy, if you can give us um, some information on when people can come and uh, experience that here. Okay, um, well, we are bringing it to two of our Miller Keystone Blood Center locations. And um, Miller Keystone, first of all, is the exclusive provider of blood products to 28 local hospitals in Eastern PA and Western New Jersey. Um, our Pittston Donor Center, it will, the exhibit will be here July 9th and 10th. And our Bethlehem Donor Center, it will be there July 16th and 17th. And the exhibit will be open for tours to the public from 10 to 6 both days. Saturday morning at each location at 9 o'clock, we have a private VIP meet and greet for people that have helped make this possible in the community. But the really special part, we talk about these young kids don't know about 9-11 and aren't really familiar with what happened and we want to teach them about what's going on. In my world, a lot of our older blood donors are, are no longer eligible to donate blood and to collect blood is a very difficult thing. We do collect blood. We do a lot of blood drives in high schools and colleges to capture just like Tunnel to Towers wants to capture that next generation. So over the course of each weekend, we set a goal and our goal is to collect 343 units of blood each weekend, one unit for each New York firefighter that lost their life. So it's um, a twofold, like I said earlier, our missions are so closely aligned that it's a no brainer to marry us. We're gonna educate communities. There's people here in Northeast PA that will never have the time and resources to visit 9-11 in the city. Um, and that, you know, Frank Siller has put this whole uh, program together to be able to make sure people only two hours from the city never forget. And then we are also going to be able to educate people about the need for blood in our community. So it's Very really good. exciting. Yes, John and Jack, I know it takes a lot of volunteers to make this happen. A lot of events happen, uh, fundraising events to make this happen, this foundation. If you want to mention some of those and how do people get more information is our website Sure, I'll, I'll talk about a couple. Jack could go over a couple, uh, but if somebody would like to donate, we do have a $11 a month program where you make a donation of $11 a month and you go to T, the number two, T.org and you help us in our fight to keep first responders in their homes, and a new initiative that we're very excited about is eradicating veterans' homelessness. We just broke ground in Phoenix, Arizona, and Bakersfield, California, and we're tackling that problem head on. And uh, one other thing that I'd like to mention over these last 20 years, which I think is very important, 
that Jack and I uh, know that in the very near future, 9-11 cancer deaths from that tragic day will surpass the 343 firefighters that we lost on that day. So the sacrifices are still being made. Jack? So oh, true, John. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a shame, but, you know, cancer usually peaks about 20, 25 years after the event. So, John, uh, unfortunately, we will surpass that. And uh, if you want to help, we uh, encourage people to have run, a run, a 5K run to, you know, what we do in New York is retrace Stephen's footsteps right through the tunnel. Every year we started off with about 2,000 runners. Last year, 30,000 runners ran through our tunnel. Uh, to re retrace Stephen's footsteps. And I tell people it's the most inspirational, motivational, emotional thing I do every year. And it truly is. And it, you have to experience it. You have to come out and experience it yourself. So we have runs. We have stair climbs to stimulate what the firemen did that morning, climbing up the towers to rescue people. And we have about 60 golf outings all over this great country of ours. People raise millions of dollars uh, so that we can help the people that help us, our military and our first responders. And that's a simple, simple promise, as Frank Silla says, that when they kiss their families goodbye, and God forbid they do not come home, the Tunnel to Towers Foundation will be there to take care of their families or to build them a smart home so they can live with their catastrophic injuries. Well, I appreciate you, Jack, John coming on, and Kathy again. Uh, this is a very important way of remembering 9-11. We're approaching the 21st anniversary. I can't believe it's been almost 21 years mm -hmm. since this horrific event took place here right on American soil. Uh, the Tunnel to Towers Foundation, if you would like to learn more, it's the it's T, the number two, T.org. Uh, again, very easy to remember. You can go there. You can make a donation. You can get involved. And again, make a difference, a positive impact on such a horrific event that took place here. Again, thank you. Uh, you're watching uh, Let the People Know here on SSP TV. If you missed any of this part, any parts of the show, you can go on to the website, ssptv.com, and you can see it all in its entirety. We'll see you next time. <laughs>